this video we'll be reviewing the advanced endoscopic techniques for biliary cannulation and access. When performing an ELCP for biliary access, following an algorithmic approach will ensure the maximum chance of success. During an ELCP, when standard biliary cannulation using a sphincter tome and a guide wire fails, advanced cannulation techniques are required. The choice of advanced cannulation technique depends on whether the pancreatic duct access has been achieved. If pancreatic duct access has been achieved, the possible options are 1. Double wire technique 2. Cannulation over a pancreatic stent 3. Needle knife sphincterotomy over a pancreatic stent and 4. Transpancreatic papillary septotomy If, however, pancreatic duct access has not been achieved, the possible options are freehand needle knife sphincterotomy and fistulotomy, depending on the size of the major papilla. When all ELCP techniques have failed, the next steps involve the use of a linear echo endoscope to achieve biliary access. The technique used depends on the nature of biliary disease. In patients with benign biliary disease, EUS guided rendezvous technique is the next step in the algorithm. However, in patients with malignant disease, EUS guided rendezvous technique or EUS guided biliary drainage are the next steps. In cases of failure of all endoscopic biliary access techniques, the next steps are consultation with IR for percutaneous transhepatic biliary drain placement or surgery consult for biliary bypass surgery. We will now be looking at each step of the algorithm in greater detail. Our first video demonstrates the standard wire-guided biliary cannulation and biliary sphincterotomy during an ELCP. In this video, we'll be demonstrating the technique of a standard biliary sphincterotomy. A 76-year-old male was referred for suspected bile duct stones. A 15mm bile duct stone was visualized on endoscopic ultrasound. ERCP was performed for stone removal. In the second portion of the duodenum, the duodenoscope was positioned on fast to the major papilla. Y-guided cannulation was then performed with the sphincter tone positioned at the 11 o'clock position of the orifice. Successful cannulation of the bile duct was achieved. A cholangiogram revealed a stone in the proximal bile duct. A biliary sphincterotomy was then performed. The tip of the sphincter tome is inserted inside the bile duct. The sphincter tome is then flexed slightly and the sphincterotomy is performed in the 11 o'clock orientation up to the junction between the major papilla and the duodenal fold. The bile duct stone was then removed using a stone retrieval balloon. During an ELCP, when standard biliary cannulation using a sphincter tome and a guide wire fails, advanced cannulation techniques are required. The choice of advanced cannulation technique depends on whether the pancreatic duct access has been achieved. If pancreatic duct access has been achieved, the possible options are 1. Double wire technique 2. Cannulation over a pancreatic stent 3. Needle knife sphincterotomy over a pancreatic stent, and four, transpancreatic papillary septotomy. Each technique will now be explained in greater detail. In this video, we'll be demonstrating the double wire technique of biliary cannulation. The double wire technique is useful in cases where standard wire guided biliary cannulation is unsuccessful with repeat pancreatic ductal cannulation. A guide wire is inserted into the body or tail of the pancreatic duct and then left in place. A second guide wire is loaded into the sphincter tome and biliary cannulation is re-attempted. The placement of the guide wire into the pancreatic duct serves to weigh down the pancreatic duct orifice and separate it away from the biliary orifice and also to guide the direction of biliary cannulation. Once biliary cannulation is confirmed on a cholangiogram, a biliary sphincterotomy is performed in the usual fashion.
With this technique, it is important to place a pancreatic stent once the pancreatic duct is accessed with a guide wire in order to reduce the risk of post-DLCP pancreatitis. In this video, we'll be demonstrating the technique of biliary cannulation over a pancreatic stent. This technique is used in patients where standard wire-guided biliary cannulation is unsuccessful with repeated pancreatic duct cannulation. A guide wire is placed into the distal pancreatic duct. A 3 French to 5 French pancreatic stent without an internal flange and an external 3 quarter pigtail is the preferred stent of choice in order to minimize the internal migration of the pancreatic stent and to weigh the pancreatic duct orifice down away from the biliary orifice. The pancreatic stent serves to minimize the risk of post ERTP pancreatitis, obstruct the pancreatic duct orifice from further cannulation attempts, and to guide the direction of biliary cannulation. After pancreatic stent placement, biliary cannulation is reattempted using the sphincter tome. The sphincter tome is positioned above the pancreatic stent in the 11 o'clock position until the guide wire is inserted gently into the bile duct. Once biliary cannulation is confirmed on the cholangiogram, Biliary sphincterotomy can be performed in the standard fashion. A small bile duct stone was removed using a stone retrieval balloon in this patient. In this video, we'll be demonstrating the technique of needle and eye sphincterotomy over a pancreatic stent. In cases where biliary cannulation over a pancreatic stent remains unsuccessful, needle and eye sphincterotomy can be attempted over the pancreatic stent. The needle knife is used to gently incise the major papilla, starting at the orifice above the pancreatic stent and into the 11 o'clock direction. Superficial incision is created first and the incision is repeated to access deeper layers in a technique likened to peeling back the layers of an onion. The biliary orifice is often identified by a ring of muscle and is usually stained yellow due to bile. A gush of bile may also be visualized. The bile orifice is then gently probed with a guide wire until biliary cannulation is achieved. In this patient, a plastic biliary stent was placed for a distal biliary stricture. In this video, we'll be demonstrating the technique of transpancreatic papillary septotomy in a patient with pancreatic cancer. A 62-year-old female with known pancreatic cancer presented with obstructive jaundice. An ERCP was performed for biliary decompression. Standard biliary cannulation was attempted several times, however, was not successful. The main pancreatic duct was therefore cannulated and the guide wire was passed to the tail of the pancreas. With the sphincter tone tip located within the pancreatic duct orifice, a sphincterotomy was performed in the 11 o'clock direction to cut the septum located between the pancreatic duct and the bile duct and hence gain access into the common bile duct. Following the sphincterotomy, the bile duct orifice was clearly visualised and was cannulated in the standard manner. The cladogram revealed a biliary stricture and a metal biliary stent was placed. In cases of failure of standard wire-guided biliary cannulation during an ELCP and pancreatic duct access is not possible, the possible options are freehand needleized sphincterotomy and fistulotomy, depending on the size of the major papilla. Each technique will now be explained in greater detail. In this video, we'll be demonstrating the technique of freehand needle knife sphincterotomy. A needle knife is used to gently incise the major papilla, starting at the biliary orifice and then extending the cut in the cephalad position. First, a superficial incision is created and then incision is repeated to reach deeper layers of the major papilla in a technique that has been likened to peeling back the layers of an onion.
The biliary orifice can be identified by a ring of muscle, which is usually stained yellow due to bile. Sometimes a flow of bile may be visualized. Once the area around the biliary orifice is identified, this area is gently probed with a guide wire until biliary cannulation is achieved. Once biliary cannulation is confirmed with a calandrogram, the needle knife is exchanged for a standard sphincter tome and sphincterotomy can be extended safely. This patient had a malignant distal biliary stricture secondary to a pancreatic head adenocarcinoma and therefore an uncovered metal biliary stem was placed. In this video, we'll be demonstrating the fistulotomy technique for biliary cannulation during ERCP. A 71-year-old male presented with obstructive jaundice. MRI showed dilated common bile duct and pancreatic duct. However, no mass was visualized. US was performed for further evaluation. On US examination, both the common bile duct and the main pancreatic duct were dilated secondary to a small ampullary mass. Final aspiration of the ampullary mass was performed. Which was positive for malignant cells consistent with the adenocarcinoma. An ERCP was then performed for biliary decompression. Due to the presence of an obstructive ampullary mass, which made standard biliary cannulation extremely challenging, a fistulotomy was performed using a needle knife. In this technique, the major papilla is punctured a few millimetres above the orifice in the 11 o'clock position. Then, gentle incisions are made in an upward direction until the bile duct is exposed. At this time, a guide wire is gently inserted into the bile duct until cannulation is achieved. The cladogram revealed a malignant distal biliary stricture and an uncovered metal stem was placed. When all ERCP techniques have failed, the next steps involve the use of a linear echo endoscope to achieve biliary access. The technique used depends on the nature of biliary disease. In patients with benign biliary disease, EUS guided rendezvous technique is the next step in the algorithm. In this video, we'll be demonstrating the EUS guided rendezvous technique for bar duct access. In this patient, after failure of both standard and advanced cannulation techniques for biliary cannulation during ERCP, an EUS guided rendezvous technique was performed. The bar duct was first punctured using a 19 gauge FNA needle from the duodenal bulb. The FNA needle was then aspirated to confirm placement inside the bile duct, and then contrast was injected to obtain a cladogram which revealed a tight distal biliary stricture. An angled 0.025 inch guide wire was then inserted through the FNA needle, down the common bile duct, through the papillary orifice, and then into the duodenum. The echo endoscope was then withdrawn, leaving the guide wire in place. The duodenoscope was then inserted into the duodenum and the guide wire was identified. The guide wire was grabbed using rat tooth forceps and pulled out through the channel of the duodenoscope. A sphincter tome was then passed over the guide wire, down the channel of the duodenoscope, and then inserted into the bile duct for biliary cannulation. A biliary sphincterotomy was then performed. followed by insertion of a plastic biliary stent.
When all ELCP techniques have failed, the next steps involve the use of a linear echo endoscope to achieve biliary access. The technique used depends on the nature of biliary disease. In patients with malignant disease, US-guided rendezvous technique or US-guided biliary drainage are the next steps. US-guided cholidocodiogenostomy using either a luminum-posing metal stent or a fully covered self-expandable metal stent is the technique of choice in patients with distal malignant biliary strictures. An US-guided hepaticogastrostomy is the drainage technique of choice in patients with proximal malignant biliary strictures. Each technique will now be explained in greater detail. In this video, we'll be demonstrating US-guided cholidocodiogenostomy using a fully covered self-expandable metal stent in a patient with malignant distal biliary stricture. The common bile duct was punctured using an FNA needle. After puncturing the common bile duct with the FNA needle, contrast was injected through the needle in order to obtain a clangiogram. A guide wire was then inserted through the needle into the main bile duct. The tract was then dilated using a balloon, followed by insertion of a fully covered self-expandable stent. In this video, we'll be demonstrating the technique of US-guided cholidocodiogenostomy using a luminoposing metal stent. A 68-year-old male with pancreatic adenocarcinoma in the head of the pancreas was admitted with jaundice due to a malignant distal bile duct stricture. He also had a severe duodenal stricture in the second portion of the duodenum, precluding the passage of a standard duodenoscope. EOS-guided bile duct drainage was therefore performed. With the echoendoscope positioned in the duodenal bulb, the common bile duct was evaluated, which was dilated, measuring 32 mm in diameter. First, a clangiogram was obtained. The common bile duct was punctured using a 19 gauge needle from the duodenal bulb, and contrast was injected. This was done to ensure that a sufficient length of bile duct was present to allow safe placement of a transduodenal stent during EUS guided biliary drainage. US guided bile duct drainage was performed using a 10 mm diameter luminopacing metal stent with an electrocautery enhanced delivery system. The common bile duct was punctured from the duodenal bulb using the tip of the electrocautery enhanced delivery system. After positioning the delivery system within the bile duct, stent deployment hub was released to deploy the distal flange of the stent. This was followed by deployment of the proximal flange within the duodenal lumen. As the luminoposing metal stent was positioned in a perpendicular fashion to the bile duct, a 7 French 4 cm double pigtail plastic stent was inserted through a lumen of the luminoposing metal stent in order to change the direction of the luminoposing metal stent so that it was positioned more in line with the length of the common bile duct. In this video, we'll be demonstrating the technique of US guided hepaticogastrostomy in a patient with a proximal malignant biliary stricture with failure of bile duct cannulation during ELCP. On EUS, dilated left intrahepatic ducts were visualized from the gastric body. From the gastric body, the left intrahepatic bile duct was punctured under US guidance using a 19 gauge FNA needle. Bile was then aspirated and contrast was injected to obtain a hepatogram. An angled 0.025 inch guide wire was passed through the needle and passed into the left hepatic duct. The tract was dilated using a cystotome and a fully covered metal stent was inserted into the left hepatic duct. In 
in cases of failure of all endoscopic biliary access techniques. The next steps are consultation with IR for percutaneous transhepatic biliary drain placement or surgery consult for biliary bypass surgery. This concludes the first of our educational video series, with more educational videos on techniques in endoscopy to come in the next few weeks. Thank you so much for watching.